Have you ever noticed that pages of a beginner UI UX designer are often full of redesigns of popular products such as Spotify, Airbnb, Amazon, you name it. But there are infamous cases when those huge and experienced design teams throw out redesigns that every user hates. Just a few examples from recent years. Instagram made image captions barely readable and went back in a month. Twitter redesign causes headaches for some users. And Facebook. Well, don't get me started on Facebook usability. So why does it happen? In this video, I want to explain why redesign is such a tricky thing and why you need to be cautious with that. I'm Ilya, the founder of Alakin UI UX design agency for SaaS. From my experience, many companies that think they need redesign solution are actually wasting resources. Here are three most common mistakes that lead to all those re redesign failures. First, communicating purely on authentics. I wish I were given a dollar every time I hear our clients to redesign to make things pop. Product owners often expect designers to make apps look more than trendy and authentically pleasing, instead of doing deep research and working on boring things such as usability testing. Surely, users care about authentics, but who wants to be a beautiful product with poor usability? Right, nobody. Second, guessing what users need instead of asking them. Yes, we are back to user research again. It is well known fact that people tend to feel annoyed when the design they got used to gets changed. That's why before even starting a redesign you have to make sure that you give users exactly what they need and not just new look. How to find out? Read reviews, collect feedbacks and conduct user interviews. Third, redesigning without testing. The only way to find out whether a redesign performs better than the previous design is to run an A-B testing. That way you don't risk disappointing all of your customers. Well, maybe some small part of them. Research and testing are the golden rules of UI UX design. Once you do it properly, the risk of design failure gets much lower. At Elekin, we've done many successful redesign projects, but we still can be critical about the concept of it. And when you criticize something, you have to offer an alternative, right? And that's an evolutionary design. This approach is more natural and holistic. We don't just wipe out existing design and make a new one from scratch. Instead, we analyze the situation, define the parts that needs to be changed, and work on them. Then it gets implemented and if the result is positive we go on or iterate until it works well. Here are the reasons to stick to evolutionary design. It responds dynamically to product needs. It provides perfect ground for application of design thinking. It is cost time efficient. Little changes can make big difference and if the change appears to be ineffective the losses are minimal unlike in the case of big redesign. Here is my best advice as a head of product design agency. When you are in doubt about whether you should redesign or not go for evolutionary design. I put videos on SaaS business and product design every week, so please subscribe and hit the bell button so you don't miss out on them. See you in the next video.